Hi guys, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today's project, we're gonna be working on the clock, which you see on the wall behind me. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, that looks great. It's, and it is great, it's a fabulous finish, um, but it's just not the right colors for my workshop. Everything in this workshop is kind of rustic, it's got a, a paint effect over it, and I thought I could really play around with the small amount of surface area on this clock and give it a real painted pattern of feel. So please join me on the process. I hope you enjoy it. You may use some of these techniques over your other projects. So let's take a closer look at the clock. On closer inspection, you can see just how thin the clock is. So there is really not that much surface area to work with. The main body of surface area is the, the bit in the middle that covers up the mechanism and the hands to the clock. Now the hands I'm gonna treat very separately. I'm gonna do a different um, finish to them. But the main body of the clock, I'm gonna paint it um, to look like old gloss paint that has become rusty over years. So I'm gonna change the color up. So we're gonna have rusty tones maybe down the bottom with a sort of a zesty green finish over the top, which will work really well in my workshop. Of course, you can choose whichever color that you like. If you had dark walls, um, black walls, you could do white over the top, but something a bit contrasty because this clock looks really good with contrast in it. So first up, we're gonna remove the hands to make sure they're not damaged and they're out of the way for the other paint finishes. Um, and all you need to do, there's a little nut in the middle. We're just gonna unscrew that, put that one to one side and make sure you don't lose it. And then you can gently, if you just push into, hold down the central part, you can just prise them up gently. These are usually quite flimsy metal. They have to be lightweight. Um, the second one usually is a bit tougher to do, so hold down with your nails in the centre and push up. You don't want to damage this area. And also we will be covering this up with masking tape so we don't get any damage to that before we do the paintwork. Put your hands just to one side. We're going to be working with salt wash today as a base coat mixed with probably one of two colours, um, on fleur and graphite as a base coat. I would always advise whatever you're painting for this kind of rusty finish, I would go for a, a base coat of graphite first. Um, it's a lovely dark colour to layer on these uh, other colours. And also, I'm going to try and use up some of my old cans that are really dead in the water. There's still little bits of paint in these cans um, and I use them for mixing colours. So I'm going to put these two colours together, Furl and Amsterdam Green, and end up with quite a zesty green, I should think. Let's mix some salt wash and chalk paint together. I've got graphite here and on fleur. I'm gonna go for a slightly more on fleur finish because that just looks like rust anyway. And the base coat of the clock is already a graphite kind of finish. So I wouldn't be really doing it on this piece, a full graphite coat, but I wanna just put a teeny weeny weeny bit of um, graphite into my on fleur mix because it will darken it just that little bit. This um, on fleur color is quite, um, warm and I want to darken it just a fraction, not too much. So a small amount in the bowl, a little bit of graphite in there, no rhyme or reason, I'm not, I'm not measuring this, I'm just popping it in the bowl, making a mess. Um, and I'm gonna mix the two together. So we're just gonna end up with a, a more muddier um, on fleur color, a little bit darker than usual. And then we're gonna incorporate salt wash into the mixture, I'm not gonna put too much in it first, it just wants to thicken the paint, that fraction. So I'm gonna go with half a cup first, 
um, into that paint and make a thicker, more sturdier version of the paint. If it needs a little bit more paint, I can add to afterwards. No, this is gonna be good. I know that this is gonna thicken up just lovely. So as you can see, what it's done, it's made it more thicker in consistency. So what we've got is our pasty mixture and I've got a really, really old chip brush. Look at this, it's really gnarled. Um, choose your oldest brush. If it's not as gnarled as this, you can take maybe a pair of scissors to the top of it and hack sections out. The brush really helps with creating texture. Um, this is a natural hair brush, but as you can see, it's just dreadful. Um, but it's perfect for this job. So now, all I'm gonna do is take, um, I'm, I'm gonna do a stipple motion over the whole thing. So we're just gonna be adding texture to the clock fretwork. So just keep on adding your texture all the way around, no rhyme or reason. The salt wash will add adhesion to the product anyway, so don't worry if there's big lumps, not a problem, that's the kind of look that we're gonna go for. Because if you think about rust with paintwork, it is really, um, it kind of throws off chunky sort of lumps of metal, so we kind of want to get that look. So don't worry whether you've got bits stuck up gently round the center of, instantly. As soon as you change this color to this browny, muddy brown color, it kind of looks like rust straight away, doesn't it? So um, color is kind of magic with these um, pattern of finishes. It really does help the mind think about uh, change the mind into what they, what your eye sees, basically. So, just, you may do two coats of this. I think I'm only gonna do one. I don't mind the odd bit of the original finish poking through. And like I said, we're gonna put a few more colors over the top of this so it looks like old gloss paintwork. For the hands of the clock, as you can see, these are so paper thin and I've decided they don't need gloopy, heavy paint. I don't want them to stop working on the clock. So what I'm gonna do with this finish is we're gonna create another patina, but we're gonna use um, gold leaf or metallic leaf. I've got my gorgeous tin here, my biscuit tin full of my goodies. Um, I've got several different colours and I'm probably going to go, this is brass transfer. Um, I've got proper, go oh this is um, silver leaf as you can see, beautiful silver leaf. And we will create a patina over the top of it, but I'm going to go gold leaf. I've got my gold size, so let's get stuck in with applying the gold size so we can get it tacky to apply the gold leaf. When brushing on your gold size, it will go on opaque and within the 15 minutes, it should dry and go translucent, ready for the gold leaf. So there we have it, five minutes has gone by and you can see now it's become kind of shiny and see-through and a little bit tacky to touch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top them on another board. Because there's a residue here, I'm gonna flip the board onto another one so I can work in a clean surface. Apply them back. You can see that they're slightly tacky because they're sticking to my fingers, look. So that's the perfect 
point to do your gold. I'm gonna use the transfer. I find transfer so much easier because you can just stick the transfer on and brush off. Um, gold leaf is a little bit more fun. It floats around a little bit more. So I'm gonna pick up, the, look, the transfer comes with a backing. So I can literally just stick over the top like so and move on. A little bit off my finger there. And like so. Oops, it's picking everything up. So on it goes, you can peel bits back if you want, kind of move them along. I'm not worrying if I get little cracks and crevices because I kind of like that look. Uh, let's pick up another sheet and we'll just do fill that gap in there. That's it. And move on to the other one. So now we're gonna burnish this in with a little chip brush. So we're just gonna push it all down. Push it down. Push it onto the surface of um, the hand. Like so, and you can eventually just brush away um, any excess and you, it will make for a really lovely, don't bend the hand. And it's nice and lightweight. This is gonna be lovely to go back on the clock without weighing it down, get in the way. Nearly there. But I am gonna finish it with a, a little bit more um, patina. There we go. Once it's clean, it looks really crisp and beautiful. Look at that gold hand, absolutely stunning. On with the next one. I absolutely love the gold. So all I'm gonna do to create some more patina, and you've seen me do this before, is create some fly spec over the gold. So I'm gonna be using um, a touch of graphite to do this. So I'm gonna use a little bowl, and we don't need a lot, probably too much, John. Um, that much in the bottom of a little cup. And I've got my little stumpy brush. Now this is a cheap um, chip brush from the hardware store, which has been chopped in half. It's natural bristle. Um, a lot of people think a toothbrush will work for this. I don't think it's as good as a natural brittle brush halved in size. So. When mixing your paint for your fly spec treatment, um, especially with chalk paint with my graphite here, I just use my atomizer when it's a small amount to incorporate the water to the paint. And you really want to be just falling off the brush. Um, it literally needs to be single cream consistency about, usually I say to people, put uh, about 30 to 40% water to loosen the paint. Different paint brands will vary. Um, with chalk paint, that's where it sits for me. And then have a practice run. When you're flicking this, you need to do it onto a piece of card first, just to check that you're happy with how that looks. So what you see here is I've elevated my board to work from. It is really hard to do fly spec when you're just dropping down onto the actual piece that you're working on. So I find it much easier to kind of pull back um, with my paint. And so if you're gonna get any big drips, they're gonna drip here and not directly onto what you're working on. So let's give it a little flick around. Yep, yeah, that's lovely. A bit more paint on the brush. Take it slowly at first. I'm not gonna, like I said, look, there's a big drip. So that's a reason not to get too close to your overall piece. Probably my mixture is just fractionally a little bit too wet, but I'm not gonna worry. I'm gonna get on and 
flick away until I'm happy with this. A little bit heavy here and there. Flicking the walls as well, but hey ho. do anymore I really like just it's simple on those hands so there we have it the fly spec is nice and dry it looks beautiful on the hands of the clock I've just re-prepped the surface to protect my unit workshop and I'm going to be using the yacht varnish this is a clear gloss finish and um, gives it kind of good old shape and Give it a top coat. Leave that one to dry and give it a further two coats and you should end up with a real high sheen. Now back to the main body of the clock. The salt wash mixture is just about dried and I'm gonna put another layer of paint, the green that we're gonna mix over the top of this. And I'm also gonna incorporate some of Annie's other products, Annie Sloan, Cracker layer step one and two, and I'm gonna use it in a very different way. Not the way that Annie intended it to be used, but it will create beautiful textures and cracks in the paintwork. Again, there's not much surface area, but what we're gonna get is something that looks like really um, split damaged paint from um, sun bleaching over the years. Here's a project that I did on a bigger surface area a couple of years ago. So we're gonna go for this sort of painted finish that has broken up over time. So let's get stuck in with mixing up the paint color and then we'll add the other layers to the clock. So here it is, Annie Sloan, step one and step two. I'm gonna put step, before we mix the paint color up, I'm gonna put step one on. Um, and this is the areas that I kind of want this resist to happen. So I've got a little chippy brush and we're just gonna pop this on. Here, we're gonna get interesting things happen because it's a larger area. So I'm gonna be really kind of heavy with that in the center. Some areas I'm gonna leave kind of naked of step one. Um, no rhyme or reason again, just slightly over certain areas more at the top of this clock because I want it to kind of blend away, not to have paint at the bottom. So just, this is kind of, the step one is kind of a resist. Um, it will kind of make the um, step two slippy slidey and break up. So that's why we're applying this and we need it to go on all of the areas where we would like the paint to crack. And then we'll move on and mix our paint color up. So ordinarily, once this is dried, you would use the step two, Annie Sloan step two, over the top of this, then you would leave it to dry or heat gun it and it would craze and crack. It would create small hairline cracks, which you could then fill with dark wax um, which would show up on lighter colours. It's great for over decoupage, um, and that's how that product works. But in this case, we are adding step two over the top of this in areas, and we're also adding step two to our paint mix, which will create a very unstable paint. You'll see as we go forward. Moving on to paint colour, I've got two cans that are really old. I saved the old cans that are a bit cruddy for this kind of job. Um, there's a little bit of paint in the bottom of this can, which is um, furl. So I'm gonna put the last dregs of furl into a mixing bowl. And I'm adding, to deepen that green, I'm adding Amsterdam green. I still want that vintage sort of green feel to this. Um, Let's pop a small amount of Amsterdam green into furl. It should make it a little bit more of a, an apple colour green. Mix those two together. 
until I've got the right shade for myself. Yeah, that's a lovely green. Maybe just a tad more furl, actually. Oh, I don't know. It's really lovely, that colour green. Quite bright, very vintage. I quite like it. Maybe a little bit more furl. The best part of mixing colours up. I like furl, but it's too acid, so, and I want a bit of depth. So the Amsterdam, I think that's where we're at. Just kind of lightens it. Yes, look at that. It's kind of in between the two, and I love it. So that's your, my paint colour. Um, the step one is just about dry. It's not quite dry, um, but almost. Step two is really important that you must put this over step one to get this to work. Um, and we're gonna use a little chippy brush. You can see here that step one's not completely dry, but I'm not gonna worry about that. This is all about creating texture anyway. It's not about the cracking really. But the paste of step two, we're just gonna go over any what way. Here, I know that we're gonna probably get some sort of form of cracks, but we're gonna go just randomly random over certain areas. I'm not gonna do everything um, again. Don't wanna to be too perfect about this. This is creating that resist again in the product. And I'm gonna be, when I'm working on this, this is my top of my clock, I'm gonna be fading the color down. So I want more, I suppose, more browns at this bottom where it's fading away. So I can be a bit heavier down here, I suppose, um, where I don't want there to be as much paint. But I'm gonna stipple the paint on at the bottom, I think, um, and blend, I have more solid paint at the top. So more cracks at the top or broken paint. Whatever happens, the product's gonna do this for us. It's not gonna be my choice in this case. Um, it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. But we're gonna give it a go. It definitely works beautifully on flat surfaces. As you can see from that vase, it's gorgeous. Um, so do try this. It's well worth the effort. But I know, whatever happens, there's layers of all sorts on here and it's just gonna look really cruddy and beautiful anyway. Right, and this is where now we're gonna take our color mix, our lovely green color mix, and we are gonna decant, I'm gonna use this brush, decant about a tablespoon, because there's quite a lot of paint there, about this much into, can you see, into my color. Now this, I'm gonna scrape it off the ball, this, you would not ordinarily think that this would make the um, paint color thicker, it does quite the opposite. It makes the paint thinner. It kind of makes it more loose and water-like. Once it's incorporated, it becomes runnier. And probably that's why it creates that instability un with the other layers. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna have to do it with my finger because I don't wanna contaminate. That's it, another big blob in. The more you put of this into the paint, the more unstable it becomes. Um, so just remember that. Oh, look at that, I've splattered everywhere, but not to worry, it's all going that way anyway. So incorporate, there we go. I know that this is good because what happens, look, it becomes much more trickly. Um, and we're gonna work fairly quick and kind of just like one pass over everything. It's not gonna be really um, applied in any particular way. Yeah, can you see? Look, that is much, much um, runnier in consistency. Right, we're gonna start at the top, just bring that down, move that out of the way, and we're just gonna literally paint it as you would, maybe leaving the odd little sections out, kind of don't forget to do the underneath. Remember, we want this to look like our gloss paint. So certain areas I'm gonna be doing slightly heavier and other areas like this area, I'm just gonna lay the paint on here. Quite thick at the top. 
and then just slightly looser and dry brushing away some of the areas like so. Again, no rhyme or reason. I love this green, beautiful. Right, as I'm getting to this bottom area, I'm not adding as much paint. I'm just gonna be stippling on just little areas that I'm gonna miss out. Little, little tiny bits of paint where I'm not gonna don't apply too much. It's not as heavy. Lovely. So now all we're gonna do is get the heat gun on it and just let it do its thing. So the paint is just about dry. Not many cracks. Um, I didn't expect there to be many cracks because there isn't any way for the paint to stretch out too. But take a look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. In the middle here, look, where it's on the flat surface, it's kind of the paint chipping away, crummy, beautiful. It's going back to the on flare underneath. I love that. So, and all of the other areas on the edges are really thick sort of drippy gloss like looking paint so I couldn't be more happy with the results of how this looks I couldn't be more happier with how this is just crumbled away. It looks absolutely authentic to old crummy gloss paint, exactly what I wanted to achieve. If you wanna take this further, you can use a scraper and you can scrape away, once this is dried, through chippets of um, the undercolor, the graphite on flare mix, and you can chip away, just creating little anomalies here and there. Um, and it will bring back the undercolour. It's kind of a little bit chewy and it kind of peels away. So that's another lovely thing you can do. But I'm quite happy with how I've got the paint finish here. Another thing that I'm just gonna add, two more things to add. Um, I love the colour. I'm just gonna add some Barcelona orange, which is in a bowl. I'm gonna loosen this up with my atomizer as well. Just a little bit of water in there. A little bit like the fly spec, we're going to make that a little bit runnier in the bowl. I'm going to kind of stay away from the mechanism of the clock, but I'm going to spritz down along this edge on the bottom half, and I'm just going to add little areas of Barcelona orange just trickled in underneath certain areas 
not much, and then spritz it so it travels down. Um, this will add to that rusty sort of look. Um, in this piece, I don't need to do too much. I know that just here and there, little dots of this Barcelona orange will really help the look of rust. We're at the final part of the process before we reassemble the clock with its hands. Um, we are working with secret ingredient, ground cinnamon. And I've got some posh chalk infuser. This is a top coat. It can be used as a decoupage glue. It's just nice and light. And all I'm gonna do is add to certain areas a little bit with a little artist brush. And we're just gonna add little pockets of I'm tapping it in, here and there. I'm not, no rhyme or reason, in there, in there. And I'm gonna take the um, cinnamon and we're just gonna sprinkle, it's gonna smell gorgeous. We're just gonna sprinkle, this will add that real rusty tone over the top. So I'm gonna pick out some areas that I think might have got a little bit more rusty than other areas, little connections, little nodules here and there and sprinkle away. Not everywhere, just little touches of cinnamon here and there, and it will really add the authenticity of rust. Think of areas like at the bottom here, this lip, where we would have water ingress. This is where I put the Barcelona orange, so I'm just teasing over it a little bit. Um, on the ends of there and here. These little connections, this is where water buildup would sit on the clock. And I'm just gonna, again, sprinkle, it's like glitter. Like so, all the way along. Adds that real rich, deep orange. And then you can tap away in certain areas, you can tap over some of the cinnamon with the infuser, I don't want to dip it into the infuser pot, so I'm just going to take it there. I don't want to contaminate the, um, if you're using decoupage glue, you don't want to spoil your glue pot. So little bits over the top, not everywhere. Some bits will stick on as it is, some will not. And it just adds that gorgeous rust effect from up here on that center. and the rest we'll kind of let it just sprinkle off. So play around with your cinnamon, it smells absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then brush off the excess. And you could wax the whole piece, but for me, I'm not. It's just gonna stay as it is. The handles are gonna go back and it's gonna go back on my wall in my workshop, looking all very authentically patterned with years and years of what looks like gloss paint that is split in the sun, gone rusty. It almost appears to be like something that came out of a garden from, from I don't know, the Victorian age. So um, play around with your patterners. Hope this tutorial has helped you along on how to create these really authentic um, looking patterners on old gloss paint even though it's all water-based and it's very safe and friendly for um, you to have in your house, including the cinnamon. Um, a lot of people have uh, mentioned about cinnamon to me before. Um, will it um, encourage bugs into your house? Well, actually it does quite the opposite. Ants do not like cinnamon, it's a deterrent. So yeah, it smell good. Great for Christmas projects as well.
So that's just about it with the project today. All that's left to do is reapply the hands to the clock, um, push them in, in place, making sure you get the right hand in the right place. Um, I've really enjoyed today's project. I hope you have as much as I have. If you're new here, first time um, with me, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell for future projects. I'd love to see how you get on with some of these techniques. If you do use them on larger projects, be sure to send me a picture, I'd love to see. Um, but for now, I'll catch you next time.